education in architecture, I think education in general is like the field of responsibility, which, which I don't think it's got neglected, but it got really overridden or it was always field of optimization to what is needed. Mm. And with this, uh, with increasing pressure on space uh, to resolve capitalist crisis, uh, then uh, the the role of education started to reflect, and architecture started to reflect uh, this. Uh, and uh, that is not to say that architectural education was ever. Uh, non-bourgeois, non-privileged discipline. I, th I, th I think mm. that, I, that, that I'm one of the generation, that one of the last generations, and from where I am, is, is kind of someone who grew up in what, what used to be Yugoslavia, that with the, we, where there was a brief interruption after Second World War in, uh, in what we could call them, call them democratizing architectural education. We disagree with this kind of welfare state and in Europe and this idea that 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 not that architecture is architecture is in service of the whole society and not just of those who can afford uh, which also led to opening up of much more of architecture schools but also of kind of opening of architecture schools for different for people with a different especially class background uh, and and I think that after this period, what what we, we started seeing is in architecture in, our, in architectural education is this discrepancy between uh, how difficult it is to actually practice in the way it is uh, in way when when you are taught or imagining what architects means and then that this difficulty really exponentially increases depending on. Uh, depending on one's background and embeddedness mm. in certain certain fields so and then so the crisis started to be detected but it seems like for me i feel that like the, when you start looking at a little bit into history of architectural education architectural education was always a crisis mm. which i think it's interesting which i think it makes sense considering uh, that uh, it's a it's a profession which defines itself by extra, extraction kind of abstraction from social relations in order to become a recognized in the kind of this prof professionalization uh, yet it precisely is one that influences a lot social relations because it shapes how the, because it, it has an it, it's part of those Part, it, it, it has something to say of how the shape, how the space around this is shaped. Not necessarily it is the only one that that shapes, but it does make an important impact into shaping people's everyday relations by shaping the space uh, uh, around it. So, so, so there is what this difficulty of you know, establishment of profession as a singular author, white man, who in their brain kind of figure out genius pro projects uh, uh, and and for whom this project and these relations with the society so this is i think something where there was always a tension which was then differently resolved in different periods of time and then in these different periods of time then it kind of gave birth to certain types of architecture and certain type of architects and certain type and then there is this other context in which architecture Help of this kind of space. not both capital and small a architectural built environment in is, is was an increasingly is at least in the western society, in the first in the western society but then uh, much broader is also putting into form market relations kind of thing, just kind of designing into societally acceptable uh, forms what speculation has determined which again puts, which again kind of complicates this self-understanding of, of architects as a profession, which is fostered in the school, that there is much more than just fulfilling the brief, whoever, mm. 
school you run, like, you know, whatever the Excel, whoever produced the Excel sheet. So there are all these kind of tensions, which, 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 which I think made it architecture, architecture education is always a site of struggle and attention. Um, and that, um, and, and then you have realist phases, kind of withdrawal, and withdraw, more withdrawal or less withdrawal, withdrawal and, 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 and tensions in school. I, I'm, th I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking, I mentioned this because I think this is something that is, that for me as an educator became really important. The more I was understanding how this kind of the, the issues around education, the more I was also starting to think, this is not something that should be my secret knowledge in relation to, to the students, that, it is, this, that, that a lot of uh, struggles around positionality students have uh, uh, are, are part of this problem anyway. So why not expo why not discuss this with students? Uh, and uh, and this is driven by the fact that I, I strongly believe that uh, any kind of um, emancipation and any kind of political uh, subjectivity has has to come with a strong awareness of how space is important, kind of how space, how environment in which we live produces us, and and how we are and how we are and how we can contest this or not, but how to understand how we are produced in, in space and subjectivities, and uh, so that I think of architectural education is also the process of political subjectivation, in which, in the end. Yes, okay, so some of the people have to or choose to end up working to support this mechanism of exploitation that kind of contemporary real estate industry is, but it's, it, I, I feel it's much better if they understand what they're part of than this kind of fog of, uh, fog of creativity and stifling creativity and, and, and that, that's why I also think kind of believe in public education of are related to space like I'm really interested in what would be a more general education uh, so when you say when you say fog of creativity are you saying that creativity is kind of overrated in in education or or kind of aesthetic uh, element of it Uh, I think that it's that is uh, misunderstood. I think that it's also misunderstood what creativity means, and then how do we what do we recognize as creativity? And and so so there is incredible pressure in which creativity is equalized with unseen, with something that is kind of fresh, new, unseen, and uh, and and that and. And that this is the big largest value one can have out of kind of coming out of school, the, the, the free, the kind of the freedom to design unseen, uh, even in the, under the most oppressive conditions, as long as it's kind of unseen. Uh, and you get in, uh, that this, that this is, that this is the, this is the point of like what, the point, what, the aim. The, what is the aim? And I think that this is the, the this is the this is precisely the problem of kind of focusing like having this super narrow understanding for what what like if we are discussing about creativity, if, I'm never sure that this is the right term anyway. But if we are discussing creativity, again the problem of narrowing down how we understand, which I think is a lot uh, problem of architecture, or architectural education. Uh, trying to narrow down categories in order to create certain, um, in order to, like this, this necessity to reduce complexity. So, so which is also a problem of a, of a kind of professional problem, which is both internal and external. So it's not just produced within the, just in the vacuum of architects thinking, but it is produced in interaction with the, with the market and the society and but um, yeah so so I think so so thinking just allows I think that one one 
the way I approach architectural education is that I try not to reduce complexity while working with the students, but try to kind of with, with students think through complexities uh, in various various ways and be aware of this of the and and then with the kind of thinking with complexity the aware kind of consciousness about the system within which we are becomes uh, important which is you mentioned feminism which is in a way a feminist practice because for me feminism is is a project about what world could be and it's a power analysis and it's a project which also analyzes the power dynamics which prevents this world to be that world that could be to 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 become mm. uh, to, to to start to, have, to become not only on the level of kind of political power of legislation but actually first and foremost on the level of imagining mm, which is a little bit like an architectural project <laughs> I mean, there is a degree uh, of creativity in the kind of imagining or... Well, yeah, but I would like to actually decouple creativity from in, in, imagining. Because, hmm. but this would be now, like if we were now in a tutorial, I would pull out the dictionary definition of creativity just to make sure that I, that kind of, that, that just to see if I, why I understand creativity is the way, the way it kind of is defined in a dictionary. Yeah, but I guess, what does it, I mean, are we relying on dictionaries for definitions? Uh, no, but uh, this is also one important part of the part of the uh, part of the educational pro or process of establishing any kind of common ground on which we are working is that we don't necessarily assume that we come with the same understanding or the same definitions of the words that we are using. So, so kind of dictionary definition could be a useful prop in this condition in this con in any context in which you rely you kind of read how this is officially defined in order to, to to start to understand okay this is how i actually use this word and this is how you yeah, use this yeah, word yeah. and then with this conversation we actually establish to this. see where we differ and to yeah. see where we differ in understanding so, yeah, of the word and then, yeah. so that we don't have so so we don't have the so so that we don't assume that we are we are on the same page and maybe sometimes we are not in the same booth but also but also um Kwame Ture, uh, while he was still talking carmichael he has in 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 his elucidation of black power he he insisted that those who define those are on power so that the, the struggle is also about defining and so and then so this is a little detail in which for me Imaginary does not necessarily assume creativity as default first thing to come to mind, mm. and 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 uh, uh, because I see it as a much broader thing, and, and as, as something that does not necessarily uh, creativity at least, be, be, and this can also be that I got scarred by studying architecture in the early 2000s when you know the creative industry and creativity were one of the buzzwords uh, is create is for me so amalgated with this pressure for new that I that I want to I want to you know that I want to try to open a space for imaginaries mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which don't, which and not to focus or is this creative or not? Is I think that's still very much there, the same notion of creativity. I mean, if you see like, uh, um, you know, it used to be that uh, fashion brands would have creative directors who are in charge of coming up with the new aesthetic every well, six months or even less, like every three months. But now there is even this kind of a creative director role has transcended fashion industry. So it's become like uh, even I think uh, even architectural practices have creative directors or, um, or or magazines have creative directors. So it's kind of uh, it's kind of interesting to see how this is kind of how this has been professionalized. Yeah, but it is also being weaponized in a specific. You know, so 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 creativity in the way that you describe becomes something that makes that that has this layer of new that makes something marketable. 
Mm. Recognize. And I actually I wanted a couple language I use in language I use full stop from this fulfillment of internalized mark, kind of imperial capitalist market logic. So that that's why that's why that and and this is something that that is for me part of education. Uh, not the decoupling language we use to talk about what we're doing from the drawings, from the from the ideas that we're trying to like to understand that 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 that, that it's a that the project is working on all and not and then there so that uh, so that um, so that it's all about under about rethinking. If we are, if every project is rethinking about the conditions under which we want something to happen in space, uh, that this is also part of it is also rethinking of what is the vocabulary we're going to talk about this project and what about what is what we envision to happen in certain mm -hmm. spaces. So, uh, which also is about shifting real, real, real relation, understanding what their expected relations, uh, just by like le legal system or stuff, and then understanding how to shift this. You know, how do we kind of co-produce the world? How do we live in the world together? Uh, in the moment of crisis in which we obviously are given the rules which prevents us from actually living together even if we live next 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 to each other because we are we are geared by the system to see each other as, as competitors so 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 then so then it yeah you know maybe maybe creativity then becomes important like a word that is important for one some projects but it's but uh, i like to think i like to use a lot in, with, with students the term support structure that what designers are that we kind of that, that, this, that architectural project design is designed that we are supporting something to happen mm -hmm. and not creating a context for something to happen even though the the boundary is blur blurred of course but 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 being aware so this is i think the part of the kind of pedagogy um, working on projects but always under, and trying to with trying to with students give space to understand what are these projects doing in the world that is more than just in the world of the school where they are mm -hmm. because also allows for um, I think it's also just it's I think it's also res responsible and ethical because there are uh, there are so many architecture schools around the world and there are so many so many uh, architectural students and yet almost each of these students is taught they are going to be the one who you know gets Pritzker or like that this is the only way to fulfill one's one's desire to be an architect. Uh, and in the context of that, we left all these other ways of practicing become less relevant and less important and less successful. So that uh, from so that you have a situation in which uh, the ratio of architects working in public bodies in London, for example, went from seventy percent to seven percent in like from nineteen mm fifties -hmm. onwards. And because working for private gives you an easier way to become this, uh, and um, and the responsibility of, and, and the responsibility is in a way wise, or because you're responsible. Mm -hmm. So 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 how to how to how to change this? Because this is not something that is is gets changed. Uh, by avoiding because if we still keep operating this under the same relations in the studio under the same relation in the architecture school how are we going to change this imagine 
you're just going to create even larger confusion in which, okay, we have a system which outside still values certain, I mean, and, and there are some, you know, some people who got Pittsburgh do wonderful architecture and then they do it under different conditions. Some people are Nazis, like Philip Johnson and Pritzker still doesn't have any, it's like, and the architecture system still did not made the kind of definite stand on what does it, what does it mean to continuously celebrate um, uh, every time someone new gets Pritzker when they, uh, they kind of mention these are the previous laureates of this prize, you know, Philip Johnson squeeze in from, from time to time, which means we are still saying, okay, this, this guy who has deeply problematic approach to what architecture is and what society is, we are still kind of, this is still a lineage. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm picking now on Pritzker, which, which, for, which I don't think is yeah, as relevant yeah, as yeah. it was. But, but I guess but, maybe the, but maybe but Philip Johnson is an interesting uh, example that can somehow, that embodies the, the things you're talking about. Um, well, the th things that you're presenting as a kind of thing that we almost need to refuse. Yeah, because I think the challenge is how to refuse all the structures without refusing working with space. That um, that a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of ref a lot of. What? How, okay, let's. Can we? Can we just on on Philip Johnson? Can why? You know, I sometimes have this. Well, it's a question. I guess I, I haven't got an answer for it. But you know, how do we refuse it, or how do we challenge it? I mean, what's what's your what's your verdict in terms of what you? You know, it's the same question as if, you know, are we, you know, how do we approach uh, the cinematography of Lenny Riefenstahl, for example, or, or... Yeah, or it's the same question, how, how do we approach uh, contemporary architects uh, whose projects are built by people who are uh, building them in almost slavery conditions or slavery? Mm -hmm those who cannot uh, leave yeah, yeah. constructions. Um, and I don't think that there is one that, I don't think that I have like brilliant, okay, so the, the hair is dubious and she has a brilliant idea how we should do this. I think that important first, that, that there is already a lot of people starting to, like, I think that the way we teach at RCA is a reaction to a lot of these things. Uh, the, the there are all these initiatives like who built your architecture who are so I think that what uh, who are trying to kind of open up this uh, when uh, this 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 I don't know if it's a lack of knowledge or lack of recognition of what's going on so so in that context what becomes important is not not necessarily to to go and if to, 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 so what I think it's important is how do we create an environment in which um, we always do what kind of architects should do, go between scales and understand the systems with which, within which our intervention lie, lie, lie are, and not to break it out everything that not all those things which are not contained in the you know, render and the drawing and 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 so and so so how so how to to you know there, and there is a lot of things happening now there are so many new like you know that in the, so many schools and so many new work which for example looks into material flows so, so that you start, and and not just be, not because you know there are all this pressure of certification because of environmental cause, but because this informs differently the way we think about space, the way we think about practice, the way we think about relations mm -hmm. and social media design. So, how to broaden also this? What what do we learn from? 
which are the projects we will learn from and in which way so so then not to not to to to, to see and 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 to you know have i and to always have a little bit of distance from all the heroes and and and, and canons and stuff to want to see them as so how how they go how how do they become this thing you, you don't question because they are so important well it looks to me as if you're making a point or an argument for a kind of an additional value that we need to place onto ethics like in simple terms in the profession <laughs> or am i simplifying yeah. it too much no i don't i don't think i don't think you're simplifying it in too much i think it it is it, it i think uh Yeah, because it is not, it's, but it also is thinking about not adding ethics as a as an afterthought. Yeah, yeah. But what does it really mean to practice and to think kind of ethically? Mm. What, 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 and again, it also comes to this kind of how to avoid reduction of complexity. Because things are messy. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and so 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 let's understand this messiness in order to be able to situate ourselves in the world. So and then and 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 then it's like like you know it's important to say it's it's you know it's important to say to many of the kind of people who aspire to become you know who, like the big architects. But, how many of these people came with independent wealth? Which is not just money that kind of prevent, that helps you not to kind of work, the, that you can work a crappy paid job in order to get access to certain networks, but that you from the beginning have access to certain networks. That the fact that, that the fact that all these architecture schools opened up for a kind of working class, uh, out kind of working class people did not did not necessarily get opened up access to networks which give you get you pro, get you projects, and and it's important to discuss this as a structural thing. And uh, because in, in other cases, in, in if we don't discuss this as a structural key, the key, 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 structural thing, we end up internalizing all this as our own deficient individual deficiencies, of mm. measure of success, like you know, impossibility to be successful, yeah. you know, and to fulfill our talents, and on and on. And, and then uh, me as an ed, as an educator, kind of, right, because I am primarily educator. You know, I my responsibility is to to help architects situate themselves to understand where they are mm -hmm. in this context, mm -hmm. without necessarily primarily then focusing on what is the. Yeah. This is you know this is also the, like. Uh, one, one is not like not just to kind of this really quoted a lot. Simon de Beauvoir. One is not born of one, yeah. one. One, one, one is one becomes, you know, one, a woman. one becomes a woman. One is not born a feminist. One becomes feminist, as bell hooks would say. One has to go to undergo the process of feminist consciousness raising in order to become a feminist. To, to become aware of how a lot of ways we think are still internalized patriarchal and mm -hmm. and and then this is this is where you, this and this is i think the basis of this kind of how to can this kind of consciousness raising about the systems which produce mm -hmm. us and produce our possibilities and obstacles and our and our responsibilities not only just our rights but our responsibilities uh, i think that this is this is this is important this is also really opaque and and I and then the and to a certain extent you have to make certain things opaque otherwise we would all go crazy. <laughs> you have to uh, and but if if but this liberates also space 
to within understanding of this, then also do projects which don't which some which you know maybe some are different, some look some some are again, you know, ex, ex, exploration of form. Mm -hmm. It's less understand, like it's less focused or much more focused on form than on some other things, but they are still then informed with understanding. Yeah. That is not to say that 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 that, that the kind of the way we think about space is probably not is it is it, bound to change because it changes over time. Yeah. And yeah. Mm -hmm. You have that kind of awareness of the social construct of being an architect, right? Because what you I mean, what you're saying, it's it's a social construct, like there are many other things. And I completely agree, by the way. I mean, that's why I felt like I had to kind of step away from it, because I felt uh, I felt uh, it was, you know, there is a certain kind of there is a rule book in a way that um, that um, um, allows you or, or it doesn't allow you to to be a kind of a professional. Um, but when it comes to your education, so just to kind of take a step back, the moment where you kind of had to face things that you were uh, told, or, you know, what was that moment of refusal? Or did you go personally through the process of refusing or unlearning? Oh, this is this is an interesting question. I'm just thinking like whether it was. Did I ever have a chance not to refuse? I'm almost thinking. Mm. I mean, I started studying architecture in '99, so just in September '99, so just after NATO bombing of Serbia in Belgrade, and then I moved from Belgrade from Niš, which is the second largest city or third largest city in Serbia now, it's 250 kilometers south uh, from Belgrade. Uh, I moved there, even though Niš had an architecture school because the school in Belgrade was just better. And also because um, it's, um, as a woman, it's much easier to, even when you have kind of emancipated parents, it's much easier to navigate independence when you're 250 kilometers uh, yeah. away. Uh, <laughs> And I don't have any, like my, my parents are economists. I don't have any, I, I don't think I even understood what architecture is when I, mm. when I, when I started studying. I was always afraid of the responsibility that comes to shape, to shape someone's world. So I kind of thought I would be an interior designer which, so that, with P I can discuss with people what they want and then kind of build on it. And this can be easily changed. You can change it more easily. Uh, uh, this was kind of my, 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 so I think I came, I, I started being aware of responsibility even without really understanding where this awareness comes from. Mm -hmm. um, and then, the, there was, I think, what I was struggling with as a student early, early, uh, early on was this uh, disconnect that was between what was happening at the school and what was happening all around outside of the school. In the in the sense that um, we were we were we would design this project. We were given the project assignments, you know, studio kind of system in which we would design housing or whatever without a lot of thinking about what's, you know, what social impact or not even that, just like what, what could you, what money, what, what, what is the system which produces this? Okay. This, I mean the classical architect. I mean, it's not, yeah. it was it was not necessarily, and there was this um, uh, un 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 not necessarily sp precisely spoken, but also unquestioned that that um, 
private market will bring more quality and appreciation to architecture than the previous system. And yet, at the, at the same time, uh, there were so many, or so much kind of construction going on, like roof extensions and all these things, buildings being torn down, new buildings popping up, which were not necessarily adding to a kind of a aesthetic or just on the organization of apartments kind of flow. So there was this, oh, but this, and then there was this kind of position, oh, we just have to educate people why architects are important. And I remember interviewing one, mm -hmm. one, one, one professor of urban planning who, for some work I did, I did with my, my friends with whom I was studying, Dunja Predic and Dauer Eresh which was about future of new, uh, future of uh, new Bel new belgrade where one professor said oh like uh, private investors should understand that architects can help them enhance the value of what, whatever they're doing mm -hmm. so so it was that was that there was a lot of construction which was called kind of illegal construction which was kind of seen as something one doesn't discuss and then so we would mm -hmm. retreat into school and design all this kind of and I, I didn't know what, how, I didn't understand, I didn't, I, I don't think I knew why this bothered me, but I was bothered. And then there was a kind of lecture, or I think this was a 2001, 2000 uh, lecture of uh, stealth, uh, which at that time was, were Anna Dokic, Mark Nealon, and Milica Topalovic. Now it works under the name Stealth Unlimited and Anna Dokic and Mark Nellan, who were presenting uh, the research they did as near as just graduated students of the Lahi Institute, uh, which was about transformations of Belgrade uh, in their, this category, which they call kind of wild city. So, like all this kind of mostly focusing on how in the 90s street trade. Uh, uh, emerged and exploded with the kind of all the financial all, all the kind of collapse of, of regular markets that happened in Serbia in the 90s. Mm. That blew, that blew my mind. your mind. Yeah, because I was sitting there and I was thinking, okay, so the it, what I'm actually interested there is space for what I mean what the, for this larger thinking about the systems we produce that how this has to be somehow also informed the project. Mm -hmm. uh, that was that was I think that that kept me in the architecture school. Mm, mm. Uh, I guess you realize the possibility, or you just kind you of realize, realize that your attention can be directed onto something that is quite tangible. Yeah, and you realize that it's possible for things. You realize. Uh, uh, you you realize that it's po that, that there is, it's possible to address all this more. There is, then just narrowly zeroing on the building, mm. and that actually addressing all this more. In most of the cases, makes you better and focusing when you focus on the building and does not mm. reduce. But in which way, but then the question becomes in which ways this makes you better. Mm. And then, and so, so I think this is also the shift in which how do we do like, how do we, how do we see, uh, how do we see all these other ways of thinking with space, which are difficult to, to be visualized in a kind of eye candy render. Because so many of the, how 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 do we like how do we give in the architecture school how do we give the same credibility and and same recognition to projects which are shifting the schedules because you know timetable is such a profoundly spatial problem mm -hmm. which. It's difficult to visualize, represent in the traditional ways of representing architecture. And what is considered the product within architecture studies should be. Mm. That, 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 yeah. So how, how, so how to disturb this? How to disturb also this kind of separation of... Right? So, so for me, 
this this was the i mean i think it's also it's it's at least especially in serbian like 2000s it was also there were it was kind of you didn't have so many opportunities to go and work for like great offices um it was pre-erasmus so going abroad to study was incredibly difficult and connect uh, uh and connected to having to having access to, to like to having money and to having kind of just access to knowledge when do you apply how do you apply mm. uh this was this was you know this was still also a period in which webs like internet like not everything was happening online <laughs> yeah. so so um this was also a moment in which uh, faculty of architecture had stopped subscribing to architecture publications in the early 90s and then they were just starting to subscribe then so this was there were all these myths about all this like there was it was so difficult to get all this i don't know sml itself came out a few years before i started studying and when i was studying it was this kind of you know the myth because just few had a book the library did not have a book so then kind of how do you see this thing that is the, considered the the most uh, but i would but uh but was there a process of kind of uh aggressive rejection or you never you didn't feel it necessarily no, for, me it feel a, this? for me it was a process of of consciously choosing to to be to form whatever my practice is the one of research and not uh, not mm -hmm. and not as uh, and not as a research towards becoming an aspiring designer who kind of mm. stacks up its portfolio in order to. So if we talk yeah, yeah, sorry for interrupting. For me, it was really no. a question of genuine interest into. Because I'm, I'm of this generation in which it's already became uh, kind of uh, bigger, like except expected that if you want to be successful, you also have to have some kind of research as part of your mm -hmm. practice. Mm -hmm. uh, and for me, it was it was a conscious decision that I want to I think it also has to do with the type of curiosity I have, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is a lot connected to, to figuring out how systems work and not just contribute. I'm wondering whether it was a discovery of a subject that uh, kind of took you in a very particular direction. You know, sometimes the subject is the thing that we're inclined to kind of follow. Um, and you having discovered this, um, um, well, an awareness for um, uh, what you said earlier is kind of wild construction, but I believe you later renamed it into uh, something else. Um, it's a kind of term that I think today is used widely, the extra legal. Is that correct that it was what? within your research that, that emerged yeah I, I proposed that term and i think that some people have kind of started yeah that term i think that that no one really uses wild anymore which yeah. which was a kind of a trans, uh, translation of, of uh, i think that a lot is used illegal uh I mean, there is still like I mean, I think that that actually what this this type of work get, got mostly commonly connect, connected through this actually got kind of in, in it's part of this larger field which is called informality. Yeah. Which uh, uh, which is informality from what you know. So I have a, mm -hmm. we have any. I think that when we we discuss informality, it's really important to kind of ask this this informality from. And, and so this is um, there is a recent article by Leopold Lambert and he, Leopold Lambert wrote one which is really about this question of term informality, uh, which I try not to use 
when I write about these topics, but I, I understand I have to situate what I'm writing in relation. Like I explain, always try to explain why not this. Informal. Infor why, why informal is, uh, is uh, why informal forecloses space for understanding. Mm -hmm. which is similar like why wild or why legal for all that's why i came to ask for legal because for me in research it was really important to to stress that whatever we see is illegal or kind of produced outside of the, the regular building procedures outside of regular 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 uh, professional relations that we expect to produce certain built environment that it's really important not to see this is illegal meaning that that it's a uh, uh, and and that actually one has to see this as produced by the system as well, so mm -hmm. that this is not uh, a rejection of a system necessarily, yeah. but it is but a the system facilitates that facilitates facilitates that, and it's not a question of morality of those who do these things. Yeah. I think it's important, which is a problem also with questions of kind of like you know informal mm -hmm. when we talk about. International labor organization kind of now kind of comes out always with this kind of how many people work in informal labor as if as if this informal labor sector kind of appears out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So so and and you know so 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 I think so this is uh, this is the uh, when you talk about subjects do you mean I mean I there was a I was I I my my degree was five year diploma degree so this was before the school in Belgrade shifted to three years bachelor and two years master mm -hmm. and on our fourth and fifth year we had we could choose kind of electives which was like a group of like four collective courses under certain title. and I took the one which was called architectonics which was uh, uh, taught by Ivan Kutsina who was a professor then kind of started to work a lot uh, and uh, I started my teaching career a kind of informally <laughs> and officially because I, I was for five extra years, legally extra legally because <laughs> i was for five years when i when i was 50 years of studies i started working with him on my fourth with one the with people for fourth year i mean i also in a way was ta an unofficial ta for the whole second year for the first second year of studies for the first year but this was this was my my first year was so interrupted by strikes protests and against Milosevic and everything that I felt that yeah because that was the years of the yeah that was 99 2000 that I felt that I missed the ground uh so I just uh, more or less went for a whole year again to kind of go through the studio and this kind of design one whatever whatever mm. like the core design where my where the where the person teaching this was like okay but learn like can't teach you as a student like who just starting but you you actually you're like so like so i was helping so i started kind of taing immediately which i think really led me to this that i think that i've been even before i started being actively involved in in, in pedagogy i was I, I was aware of pedagogy yeah um, i mean i i I did have an encounter with Ivan uh, in 2011, I think. I, I brought some students to Belgrade. Uh, and for me, that was a moment of discovery, real, like profound moment of like awakening, really, realizing that there is, this is al as always uh, the informality, well, the, um, this kind of extensions and um, things that are kind of sprinkled around our cities in Serbia. But also, I mean, it's not just in Serbia. I think it happens in a lot of countries where. I mean, it happens kind here. Of but I think that. I think it happens it, here. Yeah, yeah. But I think here being us talking from two different places. London, like, yeah. Over zone. Yeah. No, I think that's what is that. Belgrade is interesting for me still to work on as a, as a space because there is no such strong societal pressure to hide things. So you don't hide, you don't have to have a beautiful architecture, like on a society recognizes something, recognizes beautiful architecture, in order to hide the like privatization or speculation process, which led to, to ability for this quote unquote beautiful architecture to appear. You know what are what are uh, dug up floors underneath villas in West London, other than 
navigating the laws the same way mm -hmm. that roof extensions in Belgrade navigate. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, 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 so challenging this that there is a ruly part of the world versus a ruly part of the world is important. For me, this was important because we were, I was led to think, to, to naturalize this hierarchy among the this ways of thinking mm -hmm. and among mm -hmm. the world because well, I grew, grew up where I grew up. Mm. under under peer in the period where i where i grew, grew up that uh so so this this uh, the, yeah but going back to this what was great was that this elective four courses they were called space and architecture uh form in architecture i can't remember that but like i was trying to recently and three more so they were really some kind of a proto research it, they were moments in which the kind of pause and you're like you and you're okay and you start to think well, what is it that we are doing and this this gave me and we were doing the research about highway in belgrade in belgrade, highway in belgrade oh, okay. highway that runs through belgrade uh which uh and uh, in conversation with anna jokic and mark neil so and this was this was something where i kind of where i really learned a lot uh but it also with even i got space to think about my interests uh, he was um he was great to, to off that uh even though officially i was not i was kind of ta volunteering ta a lot of studios we thought were really well, we were conceptualized. He was kind of included, like we were conceptualizing things a lot together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he off gave me, gave me space to do stuff, to start doing workshops with students, which we, and then I was, then the first one I did was on roof extension, in which I consciously chose um, the way um, axonometric do drawing and the, the way developed by the, the work developed by. Um, uh uh atelier bow wow yeah um, with the tokyo guidebook yeah, yeah yoshinaru tsukamoto and uh, oh, yes, the... uh mm -hmm. and kind of uh because i was because i was looking at the kind of pet architecture book and made in tokyo pet and then yes. and wanting to say okay but this is connected what happens in belgrade is not because there was this we were the local interpretation was people are so unruly here that they're going to do whatever so so um so uh so so my so i was cautious to say okay we we, we should let's test this let's test this way of 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 translation of what happens seemingly it's like outside of norm, norm, normative architecture through our through the taxonometry drawings into kind of architecture knowledge so that mm. we can start to think with this so let's if, if let's try to do this here in belgrade because it was and it was important to to two things were important it was important to say okay we have to think about everything that's happening in our cities in connection to everything that's happening uh, in the cities ab abroad and not not as this kind of a, oh we were during the 90s cut off so it's a kind of a laboratory condition in which things yeah. are just here so this was yeah. uh, this was so this was important first thing kind of step and then second was i was really curious to understand okay is can we think is this then a way one of the ways we can approach this how how architects can start to think with this what is happening outside of professional by using the tools of professionals to think with this so it didn't feel that okay if we are doing this we should invent something new let's do let's test out let's push further something that we we are give, given it also to sh also also to start to counter this tendency that was existing among the architects in, in in belgrade that this is this is this is because people are not educated this is because people here are 
so 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 this was and then we did one like one workshop with roof, so rooftops and rooftop sections the other one on the river of uh, river floats informal oh, yeah. well sorry <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, but yeah. So, and it was, it was, it wasn't, it was, a, you know, it was a great time. It was, yeah, almost fifteen years now ago. I guess that's the moment of kind of awakening of consciousness for those things. You know, starting to see things in the city that you, I guess, haven't acknowledging their kind of value in ah, both. For that, but yeah, yeah, but for that, I had, I know precisely the moment when this happened. Actually. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, so, so it was two. It was two thousand four. <laughs> it was late, late November two thousand four. Uh, we were with friends, or with with my fellows, my friends at the, and the faculty. We were still students. We were organizing. Uh, we were organizing a meeting of your of European uh, uh, like the ASA, which is a European Architecture Students Assembly, which is a self organized summer school. The students organized for students. They started in Liverpool in nineteen eighty one, and it's still ongoing um we were organizing one of their of, of the uh <coughs> international national contacts meeting which is like intermediary national in, intermediary national contact imc mm -hmm. the intermediary meeting which happens in the fall to prepare to kind of to, to evaluate what happened the year the, the summer to see if the people who are organizing it for the next summer need help and what kind of help and to choose who's going to be doing it so we are we were organizing that in Belgrade in 2004 for which and for to do this we uh, rented the space in Biggs, which is a big printing factory on the last floor and we kind of cleaned it up and we spent two weeks living there for a week living there and we then continued to run this as a, some kind of alternative cultural space for the following nine months after that, there was people just started running clubs in that space, or like and, and cafes, and um, and on the last day, we we still had people who were our guests, but just few. We went for for to a dinner. We realized, oh, we actually do have still money. We can take people like ten people who are still with us. We can take them for dinner, and we went to uh, to part of the part. We went to at that time some restaurant that existed in Karabuna, which part this part of Belgrade, which has its most prominent roof extensions, which are called Russian Pavilion, which which uh yeah, it's like a were, symbol of Belgrade. <laughs> yeah, which were which were the key case study in the book I wrote in 2012. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, and I was coming out of a cab with uh, Louis Kinner, who is uh, now architect in London. And he was like, what is this? <laughs> and I'm like, well, those are like these roof extensions, you know, we saw them in the city center, they're the same and stuff. And he's like, but these are bigger, much larger. And it's like, yeah, they are. And didn't you say that this, this is a practice that was common in the nineties? So I did. And then I realized that nothing that I'm told uh, can actually help me understand what is happening in end of 2004 because where this is not built this is being constructed and these uh, rough roof extensions are four stories high or yeah. adding additional four or five stories on a one story uh, kind of house so that they are so 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 according to all this kind of common interpretation that was in early 2000s that uh, the nine that roof extensions are the the product of the 90s and this kind of unruly period of, of war and stuff and that the changes in government change put a stop to that i was there and i realized i actually don't understand mm -hmm. and it was this i i often with students i often i actually often evoke this moment i often tell them about this moment because um, it is this like I don't want to theorize now, but like like you know this it is of this distancing moment, friend friendos effect, you know this kind of a Brechtian yeah, 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 yeah. Brechtian moment, which which allows you to to have this moment of distance, which you, to see the system which with which you are interpolated. Yeah. And the whole concept is that we are through interpolation. We don't we don't understand we don't see the system which mm -hmm. produces that. Uh, that's why my my book was called Glosnik Zoromantos, which is Brecht 
don't stare so romantically. He, he used as a banner as a, a, about his performances of his epic theater to ask those who are in audience not to get lulled by the content, but but also and and by the kind of form, but also to kind of pay attention to the kind of content of the lyrics and, and all this to think with and not 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 just let themselves go during the, mm. the theater, mm -hmm. which in a way is you know the, the way I think about research, the way I think about mm. not to be complicit, I guess. Well, that's that's the next step. First, yeah. you have to become aware, and then you have to make a decision whether you want to be complicit or not. And 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 by understanding that there are like that there are uh, conditions under which it's not possible to completely reject. Again, this kind of how to not to moralize uh, this thing. So I think so. It's a two-step process. It's not you can't you cannot figure out whether you're going to be a complicit or not before you understand. Yeah, what you're part of. Mm -hmm. Or what you are unconsciously part of, because I was exactly. unconsciously part you can be of. Unconsciously, you can be unconsciously complicit, which yeah, mo was, mostly you are, I guess. Yeah, yeah, because I was unconsciously a kind of in, a part of replicating this narrative, what are roof extensions, yeah. in yeah. a much more simplified way. I, yeah. I did, I could understand a little bit more basis on this previous research and everything, but I still. But at that time, I still did not understand that this is not happening outside of law. Mm. It was only after I started digging deeper that I realized that, that, that it's, it's important to understand that this, which is seen as a variation, is actually mapping the gray area of the law. Mm. So that it's, it's, it's so because, and so, so that this interacts, the interaction, so it's not, so that, so which allows also to understand to, to, to much more again you, you, you start to work with this complexity and to think with this complexity i mean there is something um i think your point about that being a um something that um exists everywhere else i must say that that also resonates with me in a sense that you know i was educated uh even my bachelor degree, I was educated in the UK. So uh, this, so when you you know you're saying earlier how in the U, in Yugoslavia in nineteen or Serbia in nineteen nineties um, education, you kind of there was a real discrepancy between the profession and the education, and there was a real kind of misunderstanding or a complete kind of lack of um, communication between the kind of academia and you educated to be a star architect while the country is basically the economy doesn't exist. Um, but I, I felt a very similar, um, again, having studied here, I felt a very similar sensation when I discovered, uh, well, when Ivan Kutsina gave us the talk when we came to Belgrade, but also when I just kind of became more aware. I think that was maybe the moment where I, just my awareness suddenly kind of, um, was kind of woken up in a way. So it, again, I think even that notion of this um, disconnect between the education and the outside world isn't just um, uh, typical of no, a, a kind of. I don't think. Yeah, country. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it's typical at all. And but I and I actually think that in a weird sense, uh, one can be. It's much, 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 much easier to. It's much easier to become aware that, that there's mm -hmm. there's there's something wrong in a system in where, where when there is no opportunity to go and uh, I don't know, like you couldn't unlike unlike for example my peers and friends in Croatia who were studying architecture at the time who could get like a one day job job one day a week uh, in in kind of offices like 3 al Hade or all these kind of up and coming at that time up and coming creation offices which were producing architecture which we could we would see which looked like the ones we would see in architecture journals so it was not this mm -hmm. kind of product 
kind of product production of kind of built environment you know, for market that you would mm. if you would find the job in them so you don't feel that you're you, you would feel that you're doing a good architecture and stuff um, i think that this this uh, this having an opportunities like that to be to be to see that the system is working makes you less aware can make you less aware to understand what the system is doing in the larger and the, this, uh, and then this is also quite you know, are we reforming or right. or are we, you know are we reforming yeah, or yeah. Not? i mean in that context i am i i am you know i yeah. I, do, I i am against private property i'm against the property uh, this which kind of helps you understand immediately that you don't want to reform system <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> of kind of production of space that it has to be uh, like reconceived uh, yeah revolution entirely a complete uh, revolution yeah yeah uh, but uh but it's it's it, it you know it is uh that's that's precisely the point of ideology and represent like in representation to make us not see the system the systems around us and the way we like how we are like how we are interpreting i know but aren't you just uh, haven't you just proposed two seconds ago another ideology but there is no outside of ideology right i think that's also that's also the thing you know that's also the thing that kind of became kind of powerful that we are you know mm -hmm. we are political if we are challenging the mark mm -hmm. kind of commodification of the market of and now financialization is mm -hmm. and those who design within this within this system are not political as if this is not a system ideological system, system of ideology which is so the, and this is the only this is kind of naturalization and normalization to which a lot of architecture schools are complacent because they're so okay this is a system in which you work and you don't you don't see it as a system you see it as you know as a product of uh, nature as if it's not of, or as if it's not possible the other way because the other way is political or the other way is ideological and the other way or is this and that and this is this is uh, i think this is something that one has to also become aware of this mm -hmm. by this operation in which what what is considered as norm which is outside of po po politics and, and ideology and and things which are uh, which are ideological as if this is as if as if kind of cap capitalist relations and extraction are anything other than constructed ways of seeing the world mm. imperial extractivist logic is a system that's that's become that it get got internalized through systems of representation system of value system all this is not the only way so it is an ideology but you mm. you, you always constantly have to fight you know like you know like i mean i'm 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 up for this fight but i'm like but just this but i think what this is also changing we don't have i don't have to necessarily anymore always discuss with my students i mean especially now that i'm at, at rca uh that uh that 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 private property is not necessarily the the natural state for humans who wants to own mm -hmm. that, that this is not that, that this the private property as a desire was created and not did not came naturally whatever is natural is so that that's the whole that, that's the whole thing so if you say yes you're political yes i am but i'm also but i'm also as political and as ideological as those who are designing for the you know who are like we just design beautiful buildings for the system and we don't question the system because we don't mm. want to be political no that's a political position so let's just, so let's become aware that this that's not it's not possible to be outside yeah yeah no that that is interesting i mean i think this maybe can be a good point to connect to what was 
in what was Yugoslavia or what was Serbia like pre-1990, which is where well, it was you're Yugoslavia. kind of <laughs> Yugoslavia, exactly. <laughs> well, it was part of Yugoslavia, um, which is which is, I guess, where your research in uh, extra legal uh, uh, forms of urban fabric uh, was kind of putting a kind of point of its origin, right, 1990s. But obviously, as you already said, you've kind of re-examined re that uh, initial um, well, thinking. No, so it is, this, with this research was really about, okay, so how to understand what happened. I'm like, okay, so, so that was that moment when, it, when this moment in 2004, like, okay, what, what happened here? And then to understand, and then I was okay. So if we want to understand what happened here, where, 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 so I first, of course, did, you know, at first I was doing the same thing that Leonard, the kind of usual article, just looking at the, like, okay, so this is this house. So what enables this house to be on the top of other house? Then I realized, okay, but something must have changed in the, in the ways in which even the roof, even these unregulated roof extensions were regulated. So, so that even if this is really illegal, which is not, uh, how come it's so much larger than what was before? Then I started to look into the laws. And then I realized the changes, how certain changes in certain legislative laws, how, how what was what building without permit, how what was the consequences of building under the permit and what are the conditions under which certain things were recognized and then how certain certain situations, how certain roads for legalization, making so making something, uh, recognized as as uh, as kind of certified part of certified built built environment, uh, how this was changing, and then then I started to understand. But okay, so but if I'm writing about this, I have to also explain then how this law kind of base was produced, which kind of led me to start to understand how like you know the the. the the Yugos socialist Yugoslavia and societal property as a site as a kind of rupture. Because, and this is something because I, I in a book, in a way, I didn't go far enough in the past. Because before the before before uh, socialist Yugoslavia, uh, which was a product of anti-fascist uh, socialist revolution during the Second World War and grassroots partisan movement. Uh, uh, establish itself and establish societal property as a category uh, through which of, rep of, rel of relations among people which does not privilege state nor privilege private but it actually tries to regulate relations of distribution of space uh, and resources uh, within the society. Uh, I, if I went one step further in the back I would have realized that the, the similar problems already existed in the previous, in the, in the time of kind of pre-war between the second, first and second world war, it was yeah. where, where there was a law which said where the property law was written that you cannot own a part of the building, that you can own just a whole building, which was then privileging rentier class. So, so even if you are kind of well off upper middle class you, know, you couldn't necessarily own you couldn't own an apartment you could just rent it and you couldn't you didn't have enough money to own the whole building so a lot of people were then building in the outskirts of belgrade uh and houses which would then always always had a little bit shed you would you know kind of rent mm -hmm. out in order to have something that they were not just renting because the rent the renting was also not reg regulated so, so this idea of kind of building outside of what is outside of rules of how do you build regulation is a valve to a system did not also emerge then in the during during so kind of socialism where where uh, this process of product ho housing production uh, or, or as of a societally owned housing production did not could not build up enough for those for the highly for the fast urbanizing country so that population of Belgrade was radically growing, rapidly growing. Um, but so that people started building in the outskirts without permits on the former agricultural land houses. 
but that this actually existed even before as a kind of uh, as a, a, a solution to the system which yeah. uh, which was much more exclusionary than the one to which than the one after in the during the so 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 this was so this was this was then interesting for me where like this was for me like but like the domain of for me this became a profound architectural question like domain of our intervention where is the domain of intervention is in art because we architects are often conscious about potential much about the potential problems within their products if you are designing a kind of interior courtyard which has to be public because true because of the public private partnership and then it's kind of regular uh, architects more than anyone else are aware how easy it is to block the end access to that space even though it's nominally public so so what so 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 there are all these kind of more or less successful design solutions of how to make it you know how to make it unenclosable my work on this helped me to start to think okay but what if we take Law and and law and uh, you know, and contracts and these negotiations as a site of design intervention. Because mm. if if we if if architects have uh, architects have this capacity to read the con spatial uh, the consequences in, in kind of build of regulations of relations. Uh, wouldn't it be the, the site of intervention that we design a legal framework or a kind of kind of public private partnership kind of document which uh to which somehow embeds in the in in this code already impossibility to enclose and not to try to fix this because then ultimately you can't fix it because the few bouncers are always cheaper than 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 allowing people to like enter uh, mm. and then making a kind a of a public, a public space and stuff. So 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 I so I think that that my research on is is really related a lot to kind of various in various ways kind of circles back to especially this Yugoslav Yugoslavia socialist Yugoslavia period. But it's not necessarily because i want to understand what was happening like i okay i have to understand what was happening then in order to, but it's it's a lot really in real in, in trying to think with what is happening now uh and 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 seeing how in yugoslavia there were certain attempts to regular to, to organize relations between people or between the kind of states in the world differently that were not based just on extraction exploitation that they were trying to kind of to, to, to base this on a much much uh much more on, a, on ideas of collaboration and below like being in the world together and not against each other mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so a lot of so so i kind of go back to understand to under, also to understand why certain potentials that exist that that seemingly existed did not bring the kind of different future so so my engagement i don't know if this is this are making any sense so, so I, yes, yes yes so my engagement which i think is this question of importance of being historical today especially kind of to, maybe today even more than ever but but really trying to make history operative for today but I do, I do have one question, and that is that I, I completely take your point about law and legal social contract uh, being an area for architectural intervention. I think I, I, I and and uh, an area from which uh, which constructs a society and certain habits within a society, such as the um, you know building extensions. But is there also before we started? We, before we pressed record, we were talking about psychoanalysis. And I'm just wondering whether there is something within the kind of wider consciousness that has changed, like a kind of subconsciousness of the of the people that has changed that uh, kind of 
drove them into this behavior? Or is it purely, you know, just law will just open things up, close things down and allow of things course. to happen? Yeah, of course, no, I mean, of course, because this, these are not isolated systems. You can like, I mean, like you have Michel Fair, uh, uh, political theorist, uh, who is also one of the founders and editors of Zone Books. He, a couple of years ago, had a, uh, pu pu published, and then before that, he had a, had a series of really provocative lectures at the Goldsmiths, which were, which, where he proposes that we are actually living now in a period in which, uh, which a new type of subjectivity emerged. The, that it is different from a kind of liberal or Augustinian subjectivity. That, 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 so that the different type of subjectivity emerged, the one in which we kind of treat ourselves as neoliberal projects. And I mean, it's a bold statement, you know, it's like it's a bold statement. But there is also this issue of like, um, that a lot of problems we are living in are a product of the of 15th century moment. Uh, Sylvia Rinter would kind of may put it in 1492, in which one particular cultural, cultural, uh, historical uh, uh, context in which one type of capital M of M man, man appeared, like the Renaissance. You know, this kind of renaissance Vitruvian man appeared, uh, which got universalized as the man. And, and all other ways of being human be, started to be a kind of discarded or kind of hierarchized in relation to this man. This man already, I mean, this man does not include me from the beginning. It, uh, in, in, in this. So, so yes, so we, we are, so there is like, there is an operation, like huge kind of changes in the subjectivity, which is not like law, law is not outside of, of, of all this, but. Um, I don't mean it's outside, but it's, it's um, whether law, I guess, I guess whether law follows consciousness or consciousness follows law. Well, I think it's both, probably. Mm. You know, what, what um, because it's all about, like, how do you formalize power you want? Like, yeah. how, what, yeah. how do, what, how, yeah. what, what kind of relationship one, what kind of relationship a society has with power and yeah. how then this gets formalized? Yeah. And I guess it's all about how the, 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 um, those who are in power maintain that power. And that's probably where the certain changes also come from, is to yeah, facilitate yeah, the think, kind yeah, of sustainability yeah. of power. Yeah, and I structures. think this is where this is where architecture as a profession, in a way it's constituted as a profession in the, like this, as part of what Ariela issues a label for like imperial technologies through this process of abstraction from the social relations and stuff is closely related to kind of maintaining certain certain this is this is this is the problem that I have that of of this presupposition that is possible to be neutral. To be neutral. To be neutral, to be neutral. And that like uh, Alan Kazupancic, she's a Slovenian kind of psychoanalyst and theorist, theor theorist of psychoanalysis. Uh, in her book, What is Sex, published a couple of years ago, she actually really used, says that like both, both, both psych, that psychoanalysis and uh, Marxism kind of both make this operation in which they make one understand that, that there is no neutral, no, there is no neutral, that like being neutral is already working for a status quo. Because yeah. it's an accepting, accepting. Yeah. So, 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 and so. It well, is, or even working for the power. Yeah. Well, like you know, working for status quo is always kind of you are you are by maintaining status quo, you are maintaining existing power structures. So this, power so this, so it's a question of like you know how this question. Oh, but we are objectively professional, but or like this kind of neutral. As I'm professional, therefore I'm neutral. So I'm. This is I think that this kind of understanding. Okay, but neutrality is no is a is a, is a fake is a fake, in a sense, 
it's a construct. It's a construct in the sense that, uh, that oh, if I'm neutral, I'm not contributing both to better or to for, I'm not making things worse, but I'm not necessarily making them better, but I'm also not making them worse. Well, I want to challenge this, mm -hmm. this, uh, because it's important. Again, if we go back to this idea of kind of consciousness, consciousness rising, it's important to understand how certain uh, how certain personal worldview informs what we everything we are doing and it's important to understand how our personal worldviews and intimate worldviews are shaped not just not they are not necessarily just ours in a sense they were they are shaped by the outside they are environmental so they are also then influencing what you're doing even if we think we are there not influencing what you're doing so how to be conscious uh, like how to and this is quite connected to this question of how to be ethical in the in what we are what we are doing and to understand to understand that everything that we consider the norm in, especially in our profession is still norm according to that with true and man which is a site of violence because privileging that universalizing that one way of being in the world destroyed many ways of being in the world mm -hmm. and this is also something where i think the fact that i am from where i am gives me a little bit of a distance yeah not not only because I was, you know, I, I became a woman, I became a feminist, yeah. but I also had to undergo a process of consciousness raising to be to understand to to become aware of how much I I'm self-orientalizing, mm. how much I'm trying I'm 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 conditioned to see that where I'm from is a lack, un like undeveloped, un un that not reached status of kind of proper. Mm. And how actually this is, this, this is, this is, this is wrong. That, you know, that there is a specificity that produces the part of the world and the ways the value system of the part of the world. I'm thinking more broader. I'm not talk, talking about, um, I think it's precisely the violence, that, yeah. precisely the violence of the nine, in the nineties and genocide and atrocities were a negotiation in between how this part of the world in a way becomes part of the, this other world. And these questions of, of what, of, 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 of um, what is you know orient and what is not and then and then seeing this as a like a deficit or not or, mm. or just kind of using not using or but just you know, now it's kind of made confusion but i guess what i want to say is that um, it took me a while to understand that the that the way I, the, when i look at modern architecture in yugoslavia I have to stop looking at it first as it's almost as good as in the West. And that evaluating this as in this way, in this way, can be, is a problem because it's also, for many reasons, because first it, uh, it uh, forecloses the possibility that those people working in Yugoslavia just wanted to work through things not only in an image of something else but within but with with the context in which they were working mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but also that this that this context in which we are constantly trying to broaden the canon of modernism is beating around the kind of the bush that modernism in itself came out of this violence of Vitruvian men yes yeah. So that uh, and prescribing one way to one way to be in the world is the most progressive and advanced. And in that context, I had to understand how much I'm formed by, especially in the nineties and two thousands after in this kind of 
that counter nationalism and xenophobia that was right that 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 was growing where like was rising in the territory where I live, which led to genocide and atrocity. Is this kind of progressively like the kind of Western and how this is also tightly connected one to each other, but that I that that it's important not to see one's society as a failure because it's not image it's not it doesn't manage it does not manage to fulfill to become this one universalized way of being yeah. in the world with privileges certain which is not nice not to say that what is there now is good it's horrible mm -hmm. but uh but that is about trying to find different ways of being in the world mm. uh, and this is something that i think I've, this is my personal transformation in I don't know, 15 years, which really was informed by starting to doubt uh, 